training the youth, taking care of the old. This is the work of the church. Then there is church work. But uh, it is my desire to have all under the sound of my voice to receive and live a sanctified life. In order to live a sanctified life, you have to be sanctified. How am I sanctified? Amen. By going beyond duty. Amen. Going beyond duty. Mm. Remember, it's not what we do, it's what he has already done. Amen. Now there is a gospel song that says, if I can just make it in. Yes. It leaves one to feel it like someone wants to just barely make it into heaven. Amen. But another well-known song declared, give all your best to the master. This inspired writer doesn't just want to make it into heaven. He wants to give his very best in service to God on his way to heaven. In other words, you begin to live an abundant life at the exact moment when you pass from duty state to this free atmosphere of volunteer investment. All of what you do for God will last. The, the word said we are unprofitable servant. In fact, Luke 17, 10 says, So likewise, ye when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, said we are unprofitable servant. We have done that which was our duty to do, but is duty enough? I say, is duty enough? A born again child of God would do more for the Lord because of what the Lord has done for him. Oh, I don't know. He gave his best. Yeah. And we just got to sing the best thing ever happened to us yeah. is Jesus himself. Yeah. So all we have to do is give God the glory. Oh, Praise him for that wonderful yeah. gift. Yeah. And let us realize with that Christ, we can do nothing. But with him, all things are possible. Yeah. In fact, Jesus gives an example where a servant has fulfilled his duty and did not expect nor receive a special reward. In other words, he's been out working all day. And when he came in, he, he, he did not feed the horses. He did not take care of himself. He went to his master and asked his master, what can I do for you? So the master said, feed me now. And when you have fed me, then you can go back and take care of the animals and feed the horses. In other words, he had to go beyond duty. And serve God with our whole heart. We all are looking for nothing in return. We are all soldiers of the army of the Lord. A soldier go beyond duty. Never forget, it's not what we do, it's what he has already done. You see, the, what he did on Calvary, when he paid the price for us, we were justified. And to be justified, that means your debt had been paid in full. What did he do? He defeated death. Yeah. He defeated the grave. He defeated hell. He defeated sickness. He defeated heaven now. He defeated hate. He defeated jealousy. He defeated violence. He defeated envy. He defeated poverty. He defeated loneliness. And he defeated strength. Oh, give God some glory. Everything that you might go through in life. Remember, you're going through it. You're not going to be stopped in it. You're going through it because he already brought you to it. Oh, I, I, I love to serve God. I don't know, but thank you, Carl, because the best thing, I don't know, but you have to me is Jesus of Christ. When he found me, this old lost soul, on his way to hell. Yeah, but Jesus came down, picked me up, wrote my name in the last book of life. Now I'm somebody. Yeah, I don't want to be like the rich young ruler. He wanted to know what he must do to inherit eternal life. Amen. And Jesus told him to keep the commandment. The commandment was duty. He said, I do all that. I, I, I keep all the commandment. Yeah. yeah, but he said, there's one thing lacking. Yeah, Jesus told him to go sell everything you have. Amen. Give it to the poor. Then come back and follow me. Yeah. Well, he, 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 he failed. And this he would not do. And therefore, he never... He never uh, entered into the abundant life of living. Why? Because he, his, his material possessions were worth more than the kingdom of God to him. Some of them might hear what I'm talking about. 
I don't care what you have right now. You, if you don't have Jesus, you're the poor man in the world today. We are born again. Yeah, children of God. Too often we do not receive our abundant living for our Lord. Why? Because we do not give freely and cheerfully. Give to God beyond what you ask to give. I know we just came through a Christmas season. We got the Valentine's Day coming up. And we all have an open heart. These times of the year we have a given spirit. But we should have that spirit of 24 hours a day, 7 days a week to hold it around. Everyone in here will pay your tithes. All of you will pay your tithes. I say you will pay your tithes. If you don't give to God, God has a way of getting it out of you. And you might as well give to God because if you don't give to God, He's going to let the devourer work in your Help me, Holy Ghost. If you want the devourer protected from the devourer, you might as well give God to. Yeah. Help me, Holy Give God off the top of your tithe because if you don't, He's going to let some help to you. You're going to pay more than what you've given to God. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Oh, I don't know about you, but sometimes things can come in your life. You wonder why. Go back and check and see if you're a cheerful giver. Or oh, you didn't give it until somebody asked you to give. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. God will fight your battle. I just said last week, giving the just a worship of communion service is all doing what God asks us to do. What does the Lord require of thee? Well, I go to the back of 6 8, it says this. He has showed thee, O man, what is good and what doth the Lord require of thee. But to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with my God. In other words, this verse said, Love mercy, which is to too many Christians do not have in the life to live. You must do justly to all in your. Help me, Holy Ghost. Anyone you come in talk, contact with, do them justly. Love them like God loved them mercy. Amen. And to walk humbly with God. Amen. The songwriter said, he walks with me, talks with me, tells me I am his own. Uh, often we miss our blessing. Because you're always looking for more, and God already give you enough. Amen. Be thankful what you already have. Amen. You can have a roof over your head. Shoes on your feet. Clothes on your back. Well, the great thank God for it. He's an everything. Amen. Sometimes we are spoiled. God has spoiled us. Yes. Yeah, making things too convenient for us. Yes. God, so now you don't even have to get out of your car. Just sit there and they'll bring food to you. Yes. Somebody might know what I'm talking about. Man is often content with just what he requires of him. But if we love God, we will do more. We become a full-time Christian, not just on a Sunday morning. Amen. Too often, some of us, on the time we show up, yes. when we're doing something for the Lord. Praise well, that, that's your duty. Yes. Too often, the church member only wants to do what their duties are. Yes. How many ask, what can I do beyond my duty? Yes. This is where we receive joy. This is where Christian living begins. Yes. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Yes. Yeah, when I, when, I, when, I, when, I, when, I, when I give my age sometimes, they say, how can you keep on pastoring? I say, it's not me pastoring, it's the Lord pastoring. The Lord is my strength. I don't have to do nothing. All I have to do is believe in God, trust in God. Sure, and God will do the rest. Because he is my strength, help me, Holy Ghost. You see, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the business world, the successful man is that individual who goes beyond the call of duty. Uh, I remember the one gentleman used to be down on 14th Street selling hot dogs. Uh, his name was Hilton. And he paid tithes for his selling hot dogs. And he became the, the CEO of the largest chain, hotel chain in the world. He still continued to pay his tithes. And his wife got on about reading history and said, Lord, I'm paying that small money with hot dogs, but now you're making me. Yeah, he said, well, if God bless me, I'm going to attend and give it to him. Yeah, yeah, all the work he, he when, when, when you sell hot dogs, they're happy. Now he's still a, a control of me, but he know God wouldn't give it to him. Yeah. What are you saying, Brother Preacher? we got to make sure that what we start in life, don't let the Lord take your joy. I heard somebody said this morning, trust God. 
and God will help you through the world. You see, the kingdom of God is more than what we are looked up to be for. What we, what we just discussed, the kingdom of God is more than that. The Christian joy is living beyond those things that are required of you. Whatever you are required to do now in the house of God, go beyond that. Do more and receive God's blessing. God, when he said tithe, he's not just talking about your money. He talked about your time and your talent. Amen. Everything that you have. Amen. In fact, Jesus taught his disciples if compelled to go one mile, then go two miles. This is beyond duty of the car. In fact, Matthew 5, 4 said, and if any man will sue thee at the law and take away that coat, let him have your coat also. We must always go beyond these things. Duty. Do it is not enough. I know I'm called to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah, but I have to do more than that. I have to visit the sick, feed the hungry, help someone when they in need. Yeah, we must go beyond our duty. I, I don't know about you, but I love, I come to this church every Sunday morning. So I open the, the church door. It's not my job to open the church door, but I go beyond my duty. I love to come to the house of God. Can't wait to get into the house of God. My blessing is in the house of God. I also had to wake up at 4 o'clock every morning just to have a little talk with the Lord. Sometimes I can't sleep. Uh, the Lord, I have to get out of my bed and say, Thank you, God, for letting me see another day. Thank you, God, for protecting me from all harm and pain. Yeah, things happen to us because we don't thank God for what we already have. Yeah, I hope somebody hear me today. I, I love to get the opportunity to thank God. Why? Because, 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 according to the law right here, it says, on giving, we know that the law or the duty is to uh, give just the tithes of a one-tenth of our earning. But for the abundant life, the Christian must give cheerfully and as God has prospered him. Give more to what you ask for. Second Chronicles 9 and 70, every, every man in court as he is prosperous in his heart, so let him lay aside. Oh, yeah. Help me now. Let him, let, let him lay aside his heart. So, so they give not goodly or necessity, for God love a church forgiver. First yeah. Corinthians 16, 2 said, well, the first day of the week, let every one of you lay aside his store as God has prospered him. Give to God first off the top. And God will then pour you out a blessing you cannot receive. He opened up the windows and pour you out a blessing. What are you saying, Brother Preacher? I'm not just talking about give what you have. If God had given you something to do in the church, don't wait to ask somebody what you can do. You ask yourself, what can I do beyond doing? Too often we just satisfy what we need to do. But you have to go beyond that do to be blessed. Forgiveness is one thing. Uh, I said forgiveness is just a stumbling block for many Christians. We don't like to again. We hold on to hurt too long. Somebody, I, I have problems with anybody that said, why aren't you in church? Somebody made me angry. So what? Uh, you didn't come to church to please them to start with. So don't let them run you away from the house of God. You come to God to praise God and give Him the glory. I don't care what you say about me. Spit in my face, I'm still going to love you. Yeah, I know you said that. Yes. Try me sometime. Yeah, I turn the other cheek. Go there and try. If you're a child of God, you are my servant people. But I tell, I tell some of my young pastors, you cannot be a pastor unless you love people. Because we in a people business. Yeah, help me, Holy Ghost. You got to take some stuff sometime. Turn the other cheek. Look the other way. Everybody's not going to love you. Everybody's not going to say good things about you. But pray for them anyway. Learn how to love them. Don't let them make you lose your salvation. Which you can because you become a reprobate mind. If you can't forgive someone else, God cannot forgive you. Uh, if you don't have a forgiving spirit, you might as well stop praying. Because it's wasting your time. Forgive them. Christ, when he was dying on the cross, he said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Uh, help me, Holy Ghost. On forgiveness, Jesus taught to go beyond duty. Even forgiven some seven times, 70 times. 
In fact, Matthew 8, 22 said, Jesus said unto him, talking about Peter, I said not unto thee until seven times, but unto thee seventy times seven. This is what needed in the house of God today, forgiveness. The attitude, the attitude, let me hear you say attitude. attitude. The attitude of the Christian should be to give his or her very best to God. Yeah, merely doing what you ask or force to do is not enough. Do it never be enough. But if you want to have abundant joy living, we must go beyond duty and find a total fulfillment. Help me, Holy Ghost. Jesus came and died. I see he came and died. He did all that he could do to serve mankind. Yeah, he gave his life so you and I could live. I don't know about you, but I, he's a friend. I say he is a friend. So I say, oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sin and grief to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we ought to forfeit. Oh, what need is pain to bear. Why? Right? All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. When you have been blessed, stop and thank God for it. Thank Him for what you have. Yeah, you look down, if you have shoes on your feet, thank God for your shoes. If you don't have no shoes, thank Him anyway that you have feet. I wish somebody help me this morning. Uh, what you said, do is not enough. Uh, you can do all these good things that, this, that the Forest Club does, that the Boy Scout do, that the Shriners do, but that's not enough. Amen. you got to have a changed heart. Amen. Your heart got to be right with God. Amen. Some of us do things just to be seen, yeah. patted on the back. Yeah. yeah, but you need to do it for the Lord. Yeah. That's why I say when you pray, go into your closet and thank God sometime. Yeah. Don't stand on the street like the Pharisee, the Sadducee, bat yourself on the, look at me, I'm somebody. You're nobody. Of yourself towards God. Amen. We must live by 2 Chronicles 14. Because he said, if my people, that's you and I, if my people that are called by my name, arm themselves and pray. Uh, some of us going down praying like you said, God, you got to give it to me because you promised me. Arm yourself and pray. And then he turned from your wicked way. Then he'll see from heaven and heal this land. But we as a church going forward, we have power. Don't worry about the president. He, he needs God. Congress needs God. They all need God. If they don't, not, in other words, with that God, the blind lead the blind. And when the blind lead the blind, they're going to fall into the ditch. I wish somebody helped me this morning. That's why I'm so glad the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not go. He making me, not you, me to lay down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still water. He restores my soul. He leads me to pass the right for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow, I feel him. Why? Because he is with me. Oh, he's my shepherd. I say he's my shepherd. Yeah, he's the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Oh, what a Jesus we serve. I don't know about you, but I want to find out that if I can do anything, just love the Lord. I'm reading in John, I think John, I don't remember right now, he said, hey, what is your work? He said, my work is to believe who I am and do what I said do. That's our work. We don't have to do anything to believe that Jesus is the Christ. Believe he is the living son of God. Believe he came and did what he's supposed to do. Sometimes we think because we sing in the choir, preach behind this pulpit, serve on the digging board, trusty board, that you do all that still bust the gates of hell wide open. Your heart got to be changed on the inside. And the, the commandment, love thy neighbor and thyself. And then he said that, that there was a great commandment. Do what others they have them do unto you. You don't have to, the Ten Commandments, that's work. We are the grace right now. Uh, we do have this keep the commandment that Jesus gave you to keep. And it is to keep, my brothers and sisters. Love me, other as God loves you. Treat, each, treat everybody like you like to be treated. And when somebody do you wrong, pray for them. Don't talk about them. Oh, gossip will land you in hell. And any time you're on the phone, over five minutes, you're talking about somebody. Half the phone. That me, Holy Ghost. I'm trying to help somebody here. Because he died for that reason. 
He said, come unto me, all oh, you that have to lay in night, give me rest. Uh, he can give you rest. What? He can give you rest from sickness. He can give you rest from poverty. He'll give you rest from longevity. He'll give you rest from anxiety. He'll give you rest from depression. He'll give you rest from the world's sin. He'll give you rest. I say he'll give you rest. Give you rest. No one perform us can prosper. Why? Because Jesus is our Savior. I'm so happy I met him a long time ago. Yeah, on my way to hell. Uh, not fit to live. Yeah, but not willing to die. But he saw my soul. Washed, picked me up. Washed me all in the blood of the Lamb. Wrote my name in the Lamb Book of Life. He didn't write it with a pistol. He wrote with his blood. He came from Lord. I'm in the care of God, my Savior. He's in our life, sir. I'm talking about the one that called Lily of the Valley. Bright and morning star. In the wheel, in the middle of the wheel. Bread when I'm hungry. Water when I'm thirsty. He's the all right, sir. He's the Lamb of God. He takes away the sin of the world. Jesus is his name. In the name of Jesus, it will leave us by. Jesus, devils and demons that have to flee. At the name of Jesus, doors will open up. Is he on that church? Is he able to church? I'm so glad. I know him. I'd like to tell you who he is. In the name of Jesus, turn to the baby boy. Came down to 42 generations. Walk the sound of souls of Galilee. Is he on that church? The devil caught up with him on a hill called Calvary. Stretch him wide. Stretch him out. Is it all right, sir? Yeah, but he stayed there. He went to the grave. Stayed there. I'm going to mess up somebody. Stayed there all day Thursday. All Thursday night. All day Friday. All Friday night. All day Saturday. All Saturday. Amen. All of a Sunday morning. Did he get up? Did he get up? Thank you, Lord. Is he all right? Hallelujah. Say it.
the church is now open. Come give your hand, give your heart to God. He died just for you. There's no one here to stay. All I have to do is step forth. I'll take your hand. God has to take your heart. It's all about the cross. Thanks, Brother Singh.